Today's episode is sponsored to you by A&H Provisions. Meat and hot dogs that are so good, even Goyim understand how amazing they are. It's the next level of kosher food, and the website is kosherdogs.net. Get yours, enjoy them, a and Provisions. Everybody, we are live uh, back in New York City. Big fat Baruch Hashem. <laughs> so nice to be back here. Um, not that we didn't enjoy ourselves. We loved being in Florida. And then what killed us was going to Florida, then to um, L.A., and then having to go, having to go back to Florida. Yeah. Because when, when, when you're staying at your Airbnb, you have a beautiful washing machine and dryer. Your clothes are fresh and clean. And then we had to stay. We didn't want to come right back. So we stayed a hotel, in a hotel at the Standard for the weekend. And then we went to L.A. And then we came back to, for another weekend in, in, uh, in Florida. In Florida. And by then, you're basically traveling with a, with a suitcase. It's like a hamper. <laughs> it's just your hamper. Uh, yeah. Me, any underwear I didn't wear a day before was a clean underwear. Ew, Modi. I know, but what do you want me to tell you? I had clean underwear the whole time, for right, the record. Yeah, mine, I mean, they were I, filthy, but they you were You didn't like, hand wash them in the sink like my mother-in-law? In the sink, no. Do That's you what your mother-in-law does? That, that sh- the soap in Israel where they used to yeah. clean... The bar, the bar soap? The bar soap. In Israel, like, if you want to do your own laundry that quickly, there's like a bar soap where you just... Uh, wipe your your. You just basically wash your clothes in the instant dry. In the sink? No, you in do it sink, in the yeah. sink. Just the crotch then you area. Hang it and dry. What kind of third world? <laughs> did it you was, do it in I the don't river know. too? When, like when what? I was growing up, if you need if you need a shirt the next day, you do, do you wash it with your. With I have soap. never washed a piece of clothing um, with a piece of soap. Anyway, so we uh, we didn't even say hello. Hi everybody. No. Hello, hello. Hello, we're hello, with Leo dear. And Perriel. And we're all decked out in A and H gear. We are in A and H gear. Seth sent us these amazing. Kekur. Um, is he selling them or is this like we're just no? This is just wear? friends and family merch. I'm pretty sure. That's so cute. It's really nice. It's uh for those of you listening, we're wearing zip up uh jackets that say A and H provisions on them i feel like it looks like i'm about to go make a delivery and i'm not mad about it i'm not no. i'm uh, i'm it's... feeling very much like i'm on a crew of a racing car Ooh. Ooh, i like that you like that one yeah formula formula hot dogs <laughs> speaking of formula what's so special about these hot dogs is that you can get your first purchase at a discount of 30% with my name, M O D I, as the promo code. The most delicious hot dogs in the world. Glot kosher. Even Goyim, I like already half that this is the most delicious hot dog there is. And uh, A and H, and the website is www.kosherdogs.net. And also uh, deli meats, not just hot yeah, dogs. Not just hot dogs, deli all meats. sorts of provisions. Right. And, um, and delicious. Enjoy them. Uh, we love them. We had such a great time in Florida. We want to give some shout outs though. Yes. Yes. We had at the at the Palm Beach show. Palm Beach Improv. Palm Beach Improv, which was 500 people, none of which were from Palm Beach. <laughs> none. It was all people who bought tickets from Boca. They couldn't get shows in Boca. It was I when I looked at the crowd, I knew there was nobody from Palm Beach there. Why? How can you tell? You can just tell. It wasn't the Palm Beach vibe. It wasn't their um their it it just looked more boca y. Um and there was nobody from Boca f- f- from Palm Beach there. And it was one of the best shows of the whole trip. And uh and then I wanted to do a bit. Cause I in in my mind when I prepared for the show. I said, you know, I can do my Hamptons routine here. I have a whole Hamptons routine. Okay. And people who are in Palm Beach, you usually have a, it's like a, they, that triangle, Manhattan, Palm Beach, Hamptons. Really? It's like a triangle that they have. Cute. Yeah. 
So I was ready to kill with my Hamptons bit. And I go, anybody here from Palm, from Palm Beach? Two tables. Hilarious. Two people. Hey. Blah, blah. And that, that was it. So I go, I'm not going to do it. And they go, please do it. I go, I know my audience, and I know this is not going to work here. <laughs> so I didn't do it. Um, but at the show, we had... Uh, of the visitors. Well, first of all, I got a message, right? Yeah. Saying while you were with us in Florida. While I was with you guys in Florida, saying that this woman has a store and she really wants us to stop by and she loves you guys. She loves apparently not me as much as she loves the two of you, as it turns <laughs> out. Um, and that we should please stop by the store. Right? Right. The store is called well, the store came to us, folks. <laughs> <laughs> the store is called Eye Catcher's Optic in Boca Raton. And it's funny because I was doing the show and I look out and I see this like a familiar couple. They're um they're from Great Neck. Oh. They're from Great Neck. And uh it's Pam and Jeff B Billfeld. Bill I'm saying right? I think it's Billfeld. Billfeld. Um and I'm looking at the audience, like they look familiar. Anyway, at the meet and greet, they bring us uh a beautiful little bag from their store. This is for you and Leo, and just uh, thank you very much. And we open it up, and it's two pairs of Tom Ford glasses. For those of you listening, I'm wearing them right now, and they're amazing. <laughs> they are amazing glasses. And not only that, they wrote in the card, we're big fans, social media, blah, 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 blah. We're giving you two pairs of Tom Ford glasses because we know that on your podcast, you talk about how important it is to have indoor sunglasses mm. where the tint is not, it's not too dark. And yeah. uh, and then she goes, and they nailed th it. Th th thanks for always making us smile, laugh, our a laughing our asses off, and inspiring us along along with you to bring Mashiach energy out of the world. That's it. Yeah. Mashiach energy. Thank you, it. eye capture, eye catchers. Uh, Thank you, eye catchers, very very much. That was Beautiful. very sweet of you, and I've I wore them every single day since you've given them. You you, you really have, you, yeah. I've, I've I'll go this. blind, but that's fine. I was wearing them on the plane. I'll I go was blind. wearing them. <laughs> I'll go blind. That is so. <laughs> she said, "I'll go blind. <laughs> you burn your retina out." <laughs> poor, poor Perion. That um, has to do with. Uh... I was stopped on the street yesterday by um, a listener of the podcast. Where? Um, While he was on the phone with yeah, me. Yeah, I was actually on the phone with Perriel, <laughs> and all of a sudden, this woman was walking by, and at first, I didn't know who it was, but Edith, who's a very glamorous woman. And I say she's a very glamorous woman because the first time we met her, she was in elbow length satin opera gloves. Oh, oh you and, met her. Oh, and the time you saw Edith? I know. I was saving something for the podcast, Modi. Oh. So I saw Edith walking down the street and she was like, How have you been? This and that. I really love the podcast. And then she said that I am the voice of reason on the podcast. <laughs> oh, boy. That You're I'm the voice a good of evening. Yeah. That I <laughs> oh, love God. You guys out. So First just of all, how unreasonable yourself. do we get that we need a voice of reason? No, you just, she says, I keep you guys on track. I kind of distill information for those listeners who may not be, you know, caught up on all your lingo. What about off the podcast? Are you also the voice? Yeah, no, off the podcast, I'm the voice of chaos. <laughs> no, you're not. No, yeah. I thought you were the voice of reason. I think that, well, I think off the podcast, you're definitely the voice of reason. Hilarious. Absolutely not. You're insane. No. Okay, I have to say. Anyway, this is all to say. What? Thank you, Edith, for saying. For I want to so meet sweet. Edith. You, she listens to the amazing. podcast. Yeah. She's uh, she's a fan. We saw her in the most glamorous event one time, and uh, what was it? We had talked about it on the podcast. Oh, we did. But yeah. she she sees oh, she was, like, me. Super she fast. sees me. I'm wearing a, a white tuxedo top, <laughs> or whatever I was wearing, some like really chic thing with sunglasses, and she goes, "You with the sunglasses." Don't you do that Jewish shtick on Instagram? <gasps> yeah. That was <laughs> yeah. that was her that was her opening line. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that Jewish shtick yeah. on yeah. Instagram. Okay, I have an amazing story. Go ahead. Yeah, because this is what we we were on the phone when she stopped me and you were about to tell me the story and then you changed your mind. I said I'm gonna save it for the show because I that's can't amazing. wait. Okay, so I don't know. I feel like we have the most amazing listeners. Ta the best. The Mashiach energy. This yeah. is my Mashiach energy story. So everybody knows I have a nine-year-old, right? And he is very cool. And amongst other things, he's obsessed with hip-hop. Really? Obsessed. He knows 
he teaches me about music. Wow. Now he knows all the words. I mean, social services is probably going to come after this episode. <laughs> I mean, from like um, Biggie to Eminem, it's it's Tupac. Like it's really impressive. Just not Kanye anymore. Well, you know what, Kanye. I we've discussed this was not only my favorite. Right, you told me. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, we kind of we, we're having yeah. a little bump with Kanye yeah, right we, now. He's not in the Ho- rotation anymore. Ho- hopefully, he'll come back. But anyway, he knows all these up and co- co- like up and coming hip hop artists, and okay. there's one who's like in his like early twenties. His name is Central C, and he is British. And okay. Ari, my nine year old, knows all the words to all the songs. Now, Central C is performing at Irving Plaza Mm -hmm. tomorrow night. Now, Irving Plaza is A, general admission, and B, I'm sure, is going to be filled with marijuana smoke. Okay. And it's really questionable to bring a small child there, yes? Nine years old? Yeah. Yeah. What what does nine-year-old look like? Uh, Yay high. It's like yay high. No, he's... How tall is he? Like, just show me. Like, Small, medium, and large child. That's all we know. We don't like know, this, age, know ages. Like this. <laughs> he's no, little. That small? Yeah, he's little. Maybe like this. I mean, he's a little person. Okay. Yeah, no, you can't. You're going to lose No, you, in the picture. What are you going to do? Put him on a leash? Though. Well, but how can you not bring a kid to something like this? Now, there are VIP seats yes. mm-hmm. that are like $1,000 a ticket okay so i put on instagram like do i know anybody at live nation or irving plaza like i thought maybe like one of like my industry friends could like hook us mm-hmm. up i said of course i'm happy to pay for tickets right. but i don't want to put the child in the middle of general admission no seats somebody wrote to me yes saying he's in the music business of course and he is a huge fan of our podcast wait a minute and that's what's up he got us vip wristband seats wait and when is this am i coming wow. yeah what so what the hell you guys want to go this is no what th- this is karma for her not getting the sunglasses <laughs> now she's getting the wait ticket. so tomorrow night what, what do i have i have a show tomorrow night is thursday you have a show i have a show cancel i have a, that thing what I'm, cancel it i can't no it's a whole so podcast. you got vip tickets mm-hmm. for I'm an taking. angel in your dms Ethan Berlin. Ethan, you can slide into my DMs. Ethan anytime. might slide into your DMs because okay. he wants to talk to. Um, he has. He's amazing. I'm Maybe so should... happy. That's Mashiach energy. Yeah. Yeah, That's yeah. Mashiach. Which, by the way, we're working on a uh, Mashiach energy line of merch. Mm. Yeah. Where it's it, we're concepting right now. We're we're brainstorming. If you have good ideas for. We're working for the logo right we're now. We're sniffing we've... around fonts, colors. Yeah. Kind of like just very preliminary. We'll let you know in the capsule. Wait, drop. hold on. So how amazing is this? Your kid's going to be like, when I was nine years old, my mom brought me to... A hip-hop the, to, 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 to To Capital C. Um, Central C. Central C. And uh, that's amazing. It's so cool. It's oh, pretty that's cool. wow. Yeah. Everyone, thanks for being nice to us. Yeah. I remember my, mo- my mom brought me to see Goldfinger, the, the, the movie with... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Double, no, spy, uh, spy, my mom brought me to see Passion of the Christ. My, my, my first, one of my first movies, my mom took me to to see uh, it's not a James joke. Bond. Um, you'll, he'll remember this. He'll remember it. If remember we don't this. get crushed to death. What? If we don't get crushed to Come death. Come on, what are you talking about? You'll be fine. It's going to be sick. Nothing on Passion of the Christ. That was really funny. That was the he, first rated R movie I was allowed to see in theaters. Passion of the Christ. That's what yeah. his mom took him to. Yeah, that's what, do you I know how horrifying that, that movie is? The, I went to see that just to hear the Aramaic. It was oh my god! No, they terrifying. spoke in Aramaic, which is which is the language of the. Yeah, I, I understand which what Aramaic is. Which is the language of the Talmud. So I wanted to go see how they speak, how they speak oh Aramaic, and they spoke it like Goyim. <laughs> they, I mean, uh, it was like listening to Goyim speak Aramaic. I was ready to hear the aim, but you the aim, but but nothing. They they like. <laughs> okay, let's let's slow down here for a second. You're, I'm taking what what does this say about all of us? I'm taking my child to see Central C. Your first thing that your mom took you to was Goldfinger. Not Goldfinger, a spy who loved me. What is James that? Bond? It was a James Bond movie. Were you into that? Double, I was so I bought a, a toy gun at the end. Oh my god, I that's wa- so cute. I was I was like, I'm James Bond. 
I'm James Bond. James Bond. I'm James Bond. I solve all mysteries except for Friday night. Friday night, I don't work. <laughs> no, no, no mysteries Friday night and Saturday. But after Shabbos, I'll figure your mystery out. Oh, my Mochi God. Mochi Shabbos Mysteries. Mochi Shabbos Mystery. Exactly. That's an amazing series of like a Nancy That's Drew. the title of this episode. Everything with Perry L is that, it, this is Perry L's <laughs> thing, thing. She stops and <laughs> say anything. Toilet. Oh. <laughs> my. God. We should have t-shirts made saying toilet. <laughs> That's everything we say. We should. You right away. <laughs> I'm just like, right away. I am telling you that a series of what is it, Motsi Shabbos mysteries <laughs> for like young Orthodox kids, like picture books, yeah, uh huh, or Mochi like Shabbos Nancy mystery. Drew, like teen more. And you could maybe it's like an interactive story where like you can leave clues around the house on for them to find and do on Shabbos. Like the rabbi lost his prayer book. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Okay, and then your mother Whatever. took you to Passion of the Christ. Yeah. How old are you now? Very young. Like, what year did that come out? I was not old enough. I was a small child. I was terrified. It was awful. I don't remember what happened. I know he didn't. Uh, he, he didn't end up well for him. Yeah, he didn't. Yeah. But uh, was it like it was a very bloody right? Yeah, it was bloody as hell. Yeah, yeah, and I like whippings and people so were crying. What was her t when she uh, when she chazarred with when she went over the movie afterwards with you? She didn't. She didn't say to you what? What did you think? Silence how, on the way home. How like, Yeshki died for you? She wanted me to see. I don't know. It was traumatizing. By the way, some fan sent me a picture of a restaurant in Israel. No. I, I'm dying. Um, I'll even tell you who it is, because he, David Lyons, in, uh, so he sent me this picture of a, of a, it's a restaurant in Israel, it's on the corner, and look at the name of the restaurant. What does it Yishka? say? Yashki. Okay. Yud Aleph Shin Kuf Hey, Yashka, Yashka, which is how Jews, Jews, that's how when we say Jesus, we say. So is it a Christian restaurant? Y y I don't know what it is. It's a restaurant in the middle of Israel and it's called Yashki. Okay. So, of course, my joke was what's the cross street? Oh, oh boy. <laughs> Too soon? Too soon? You get a cross street? We yeah, I get it, it Modi. Okay, I, like I saw it. Passion of the Christ. Okay, that's it. <laughs> that was my passion. So, how Christ. excited is he for this concert? He's so he doesn't know. Oh, he's a surprise. <laughs> no! Oh my You're God! Could you surprise him? him? Yeah. Are you gonna do the whole filming of him? Of him? I don't know. I don't like putting him. I don't put him on social media. Oh, that's so <laughs> sweet. Especially not going to a rave. <laughs> <laughs> I do need to go get him a bunch of bling on Canal Street, though. Oh, it's like that. I mean, this kid wants a Rolex for his bar mitzvah. That's what I'm dealing Good with. Good for him. Good I for him know. for wanting that. Mm -hmm. Good for him for wanting I've been wanting uh, a Rolex for my bar mitzvah tell too, him, but nothing. Tell him for, for, for graduation. <laughs> if he graduates high school well we'll, well, we'll find him a nice Rolex. Not His bar mitzvah is too early, right? Uh, way too early for, for Rolex. Yeah, it's crazy. I don't even get, have a Rolex. But you should buy him a watch for his bar mitzvah so he can try to, he could already learn to wear a watch and have respect for a watch. Ooh. Okay. Very, very. What kind I, of a watch? My first watch was an Omega when I was 13 years old. It was an old watch of my father's. I, it was one of the most amazing. I loved it. I loved it. Okay. I feel like you, first of all, you need to have a bar mitzvah if you want to get a Rolex. He doesn't need a bar mitzvah. He said he wants a bar, he's been wanting a Rolex for his bar mitzvah, but so far so nothing. We were at my I just want bar mitzvah days. checks. That's really it. <laughs> the thing about bar mitzvah checks is they usually just cover the bar mitzvah, if that. Well, if I don't no, have usually a bar mitzvah. Parents, you keep them. Yeah, if, yeah, if yeah. parents are doing well. Um, we, we were at a bar mitzvah. He came to my, my cousin's daughter's b uh, bat mitzvah, which now is called b'nai mitzvah. It's a they-them mitzvah. It's a they-them mitzvah. It's it? not a bar or bat mitzvah anymore. It's a b'nai mitzvah. It's a gender-neutral bar mitzvah. I called my cousin and go, is it two people doing a bat mitzvah? No, it's just her. I go, so why is it a b'nai mitzvah? Well, is she a they? She no. is a she girl is and identifies as a, as a woman, as a lady, as she's... A she. She's a bat mitzvah. Okay. And so, but on the... Uh, they had to write... They, they belong to a reform or conservative synagogue. Oh, okay. 
and uh, they had a rabbi there, and she with the the whole like you, out of central casting, like the, the the hair out to here, you know, with the with the pink yarmulke on top. Oh, amazing! And the talis, it looked like a challah cover. <laughs> and she sang it all, and it was very sweet. And then I did a whole ceremony, and it was very cute. It was very, it was very, very sweet. This is in I, okay. This is in L.A. Isn't no, this isn't in, in uh in in Florida. In, in Florida. Oh. Why did you guys fly from Florida to LA back to Florida to schlep to New York? Because we uh, miscalculated. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. No, we, we had to go to LA for the comedy festival. Yeah, we were in Florida, and then it so happens that after the comedy festival was this bat mitzvah that we had to go to as well. So we had to return to Florida. Oh, okay. Which yeah. let me tell you something: the flight from Miami to LA, you could die. I felt like we were flying to Singapore. <laughs> <laughs> it was the longest domestic flight I've ever been on. No. I think the planes are getting slower because no, you're they're flying across no. the entire United States. It is. States. I was so, going insane on that plane. So let me explain to you what happened in that plane. It's a the the plane from Miami to LAX. Was a one of those planes that should only be flying, you know, for two hours. Yeah, it was tiny. The seats didn't go all the way back, and the uh, and there was no and American Airlines. Aren't you embarrassed? Yeah, it was gross. They don't have screens. Hey, take out your iPhone and, uh, and, kill and yourself. go to internet entertainment. Take, take and out your iPhone, go to Google, and say there. how to commit suicide on an airplane. The old people because... don't know how to do that. And the, and that now I'm staring at a screen this oh big instead God. of a screen on on my on my uh, on the back of a seat, chutzpah. No, but we got the scoop from a fellow passenger that if you get a different uh, if you get the later flight, you get the lay flat seats. But for some reason, which we got on the way back from right. L.A. to Miami, we got the lay flat seats. Yeah, but from Miami to L.A., you could die. Right. Never mind everybody who's flying coach. Like uh, oh, that's not even an option. That's not my problem. That's not a, I, a part of my. Businesses that you can't. I'm. I'm. I'm not flying recreationally here. Right. I'm flying for work. You can't arrive someplace a, 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 a shmata. <laughs> you can't. You can't. First um, of all, I keep telling you that the only airline to fly is Delta. No, yeah. Delta's great. Delta's I love great, Delta, but, but the price was so much more, and we needed to do a thing where it can. You know, I'm excited to fly British Airways to. Yeah, to we're gonna fly British Airways. We're going to London because they do it right. I feel like. You have yeah, and the the Heathrow Lounge is insane. Yeah, I'm excited. My first time walking into my into Heathrow Lounge, I said, "I want to throw a bar mitzvah here." <laughs> it's so beautiful. Maybe my bar mitzvah will be at Heathrow Lounge. That's fine. We'll do that there. A British bar mitzvah. Mm -hmm. You want to have a bar mitzvah? A bar mitzvah. Sorry. I feel like you should have a bar mitzvah. Yeah. Did you want to talk about what else? Did, what we had the festival. With? What? Okay, I thought that was going to be a different episode. No, I could. Whatever you want to talk. Well, I think we should talk about it now. It should be the first one. No. Well, we can run the next one first. Oh, okay. Like I feel like you should start with the festival. Okay. I want to continue about Florida for a minute. Go ahead. You did so many shows there. Thank God. Thank God. Leo and I. Went to when I was there, we had like a 12 course meal at the Italian place. Yeah, oh, and what? Oh, that was what I wanted to talk about the lizards. <laughs> the what? The what? Oh, the iguanas, yeah, the iguanas. So, Leo's on this whole trip the entire time I was there telling me, Oh, like, isn't this so much nicer than New York and the weather? And that there are. Right? That's your position? Yes, Bill. that's my stance. I've stated it publicly before. I'll state it again that Florida's the vibe. This one turns into a fisherman. I went full feral. What were oh, the... He was so... Yeah, no, we... Obviously, we had the, the iguanas that are there. And then you drive and you see the... Pecans. Peacocks. Pe Peacocks. <laughs> we, 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 we figured out what you were Peacocks. trying to say on an earlier the, episode. The you were saying pelicans? Pe yeah. No, but... But it would... Pe they were The peacock. ones that have those beautiful Peacocks. blue uh, feathers. And then the other, like, birds. Are just beautiful animals. Whereas you come to New York, it's rats and squirrels. Right. And um, and then what are those fish? Tarpon. Oh. But I feel like we talked we about, talked about that. We talked about this already? Yeah. yeah, we talked... See, I listened to the episodes okay. again. 
Well, Leo fished for them. He threw them the... the, the, the yeah, we, That's right. They, okay. We covered the... So I read a headline so. yesterday, and I thought of you. Oh, I read it, 80, too. You, okay, go ahead, please. No, this was your idea. 85-year-old woman... Yes. ...walking her dog in Florida gets eaten by an alligator. Wow. Okay, this is the actually the thing. The alligator went for her dog. Oh. She went in after the dog. Oh. The alligator took her instead. But they recovered the body. The alligator didn't eat her. He just k- killed her. He drowns her. That's what they always do. Yeah. Now, but, that's not going to happen to you in New York. Like, I don't want to go out on a fucking walk and get eaten no, by but an alligator. As someone who grew up in Florida, you're taught, and it's instilled in you from a very early age, that, like, A, you don't go swimming in lakes. You don't play near lakes. You don't go, like, freshwater places like that. You don't go near them or, like, or play in them, really. Because there's alligators. I just don't think that... Also, if your dog gets taken by an alligator, I'm sorry. Just bye to the dog. (laughs) I'm, I would I, send, love, I would send the I, I would throw the 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 plastic bags where you pick up the caca with. Like, I would throw them that the. No, but you know that also in related alligator news, they found an alligator in Prospect Park this week, in the What's lake. What's she doing there? That's right. It was a four foot long alligator in Prospect Park. They think it was someone's pet, probably some weirdo in Bushwick. No. Ooh, yeah, some God. weirdo in Bushwick probably had it like in a tank in their bedroom, and then realized it was getting too big to have in a tank. So they put it in the lake in Prospect Park, and it's freezing outside. So it's like floating around, half dead, and in a Montclair oh, vest. People are the worst. And they, uh, it was like where all the kids play too, like all like right where the the park is. Oh my god! Yeah. And the thing that was crazy is that like then they arrested it. Like it looked like it was like in yeah, like they handcuffs. Oh, yeah. they should just killed it and put it out of its misery. I don't know. I think they were taking it somewhere and make so, me like, like a cute pair of boots. Ew. Cute. Why? No. What you don't wear leather? I do, but I don't want to know from where, like, how it came to there. I'm gonna make the alligator. What do you think all those nice Birkin bags are made out of? Uh, out of Mashiach energy. <laughs> out of um, Mashiach energy and alligator. <laughs> <laughs> we um. So what? What else? What else do you want to talk about? That was what I wanted to talk about. I wanted to ha- hear what Leo had to say about like he's complaining about like loud taxi noises. This and is I'm the like, thing. Alligator attacks are preventable. Right. You do, you do not need to be attacked by an alligator. You, it's if you're self if you're aware of your surroundings. That's why. So we grew up in Florida. You never went in a lake. You never played near a lake. Like et cetera, et cetera. And then when I moved to Georgia in high school, people would like swim in the lake and like go in the creek. And I was like so freaked out. I was like, Are you sure there's no alligators here? And how can you be sure? Because then that part of Georgia, there's it's too cold. There's no alligators. It's not like connected to like a marshy, swampy area. That's usually what they need. They need like some sort of ca- a canal system that gets them to the swamp. Um, and we were like up in a the mountain. There's no, it gets it gets too cold. Trust I'm me, not, I googled. I'm, I mean, not, it's like the yeah. crocodile hunter over here. No, he is. But uh, but I, I will tell you a better story. When we were flying from from Florida to to California, there was a couple in front of us, miserable, <laughs> miserable couple. Uh, they had drama from beginning to end. When we were boarding, they they clicked in, and then they said, I think we forgot something where we were sitting. Ugh. So they said, they we, we, we have to them. unboard you, which means bring a manager over, yeah. click, click again, get them off of the route. And then they went, and they didn't forget something. They came back. And how do we know? Because they were sitting in front of us. She was this, she was wearing this visor, but the top of her hair was all uh, white, and then she had the rest of it, it was a color. Um, so she didn't do her roots for a while, but he had this big Rolex on one hand, and then he had this like smart, the, the smart watch Apple on the watch. other hand, Apple oh, watch. And God. she was just, and they were very just complaining about everything and complaining and, and this and that. And then she, at one point, I'm watching them just for entertainment. And then she goes to the bathroom and comes back. And as she's coming back, she's like whispering to her husband, they don't keep it clean and they don't do that. And as she walked in, she smashed her head <gasps> into the, into like, while she's complaining and, and bitching, boom, right into the, you know, she, she forgot to duck before going into her seat. And I said, there you go. That's Mashiach energy. I don't know, it's not Mashiach <laughs> energy, but she got, she needed that. She needed that. She, need, she needed that that hit to the side of her head. 
Some people need a good smack. Uh, but yeah, in Hebrew you say, um, there's like a, the, the donkey in El Harod. You bring, someone needs a good smack to the side of the head. You bring behind the donkey and the donkey, <laughs> kick him one high, right into the head just to straighten the whole thing out. She needed that. I could tell. It calmed her down. This conversation blows. What? Conversation blows. Why? No one cares about what happened on the airplane. I just wanted to tell you that. I, I was... I'm being honest. Well, you have to chime in with something better then. Sure, I'll chime in. Let's talk about something more controversial, spicy. Yes. Okay. Um, Rihanna's Super Bowl performance. Super, Super Bowl. Oh, show. cute. Okay. Friend of the show, Noah Tishby, was upset with Rihanna because as part of her medley that she performed, she included songs that featured Kanye West, even though she didn't play the Kanye parts and Kanye was not on the field or in the performance with her. It's just a song that he's featured on. They still included some of his songs. And so everyone was, including Noah Tishby, who's been on this podcast, mm -hmm. was calling Rihanna an anti-Semite. And I was wondering if you guys had any thoughts about that. I, um, I, I think she's okay with it because all of her songs have people singing in it. And she, it wasn't like she even did the words that he did. She just, it was the, the beat or whatever yeah, it was, right? It was just like the beat of the yeah. song and then her part of the songs that they included. And I, I, I don't think she overthought it. Do you? I mean, I think Rihanna had a lot more on her mind than who was in like the background of her songs. Number one, revealing to like, I don't know how many billions of people that. She and being pregnant up there. That was a woman collecting a check. That's what that performance was. Her she needs Fenty? the Super Bowl. Like, the Super Bowl needs her more than she needed the Super Bowl. She is a billionaire with a B. She didn't need to be doing any of that with stuff. With a B. Okay, first of all, okay, if we're going to talk about Rihanna, let's start with her nod to Andre Leon Talley. Yes, beautiful, with the coat. Gorgeous. Yes, beautiful tribute. stunning. Gorgeous. I believe it was custom made for her by Givenchy, if I'm not mistaken. It was so. custom made for her by Givenchy. But, okay. It was custom. Of course it's custom made. She's performing at the Super Bowl. It wasn't like she went to Zara <laughs> and and uh, and tried on a few outfits. I'm leaving. And then she went <laughs> over I'm to... I'm leaving. Are you in... Of course, and it was custom made for her. It was so Duh. chic. She looked so good. And... Yeah. The biggest baller move, forget the revealing that she was pregnant, the biggest baller move was that she stopped in the middle and to powder her face with her Fenty. Yeah, it was product placement in the middle of the... Uh, went up. Amazing. 830%. A what businesswoman. Mm -hmm. Her Fenty um, makeup. Makeup went up. Oh, after, wow. Yeah. Which is owned by LVMH, which is why she's a billionaire. Yes. Because they bought, they, they bought her brand. But there was that other guy that also was performed on the, uh, who? Sam. Uh... Oh, so actually that's another thing I wanted to talk about. Because did you watch the Grammys with Sam Smith's performance? I mean, I caught a little bit of it. We just steamrolled right past Noah Tishby, though no response on the anti-Semite. Yeah. She was just... What do you think? Well, I like Noah Tishby, obviously, and she was she's been on the show, and we love Israel, and I get it. But like, how many things can you pick to be upset about? Like, Rihanna has never said anything anti-Semitic. Uh, yeah. The yes, one of her biggest songs happened to have Kanye on it, but she didn't include his parts or like have him on the field with her. Right. She just did her part of the song, which everyone loves. It's a great song. Yeah. So like, you can't not include it in the medley that she does at the Super Bowl. But but Noah Tishby was like, any mention or inclusion of anything Kanye has ever touched whatsoever mm. is off limits. And that's what I think is like... I don't know if Noah's heard my bit about, about anti-Semitism. There's no recoil. First of all, I don't think it was anti-Semitic what she did. And it so, was there was nothing anti there's nothing about it. But Noah Tishby does need to have something to grab onto with anti Semitism. There's plenty. Right. But she but, this little thing, okay, this, let's make a thing out but of But I that. think if you get outraged at everything like that, it dilutes your outrage to right. like now we're just mad at everything. Right. And so like for example, the Sam Smith performance at the Grammys was extremely visually uh kind a, of a uh, cry for help satanic kind of he's wearing like <laughs> oh my god devil horns you see Leo it? calling sam smith satanic. no he was wearing devil horns there was like flames coming out people were dressed like really scary it was like 
I, when I watched it, didn't we were watching it together, Modi? Didn't I go wait till Tucker Carlson sees this? Oh shit, yeah, because sure. he's gonna have and, a field day. Put it on. And the next day, Tucker Carlson had a whole segment of like Sam Smith is doing the satanic agenda for your children, and like that, I'll give it to Tucker because it looked satanic. Like it, uh, even though that was the whole point was to get people upset, but then Candace Owens, another right wing sort of talking head, uh pointed out that a lot of people were upset with Rihanna's Super Bowl performance too that it, that was also satanic. Oh god. And they were doing all cuz she did the she did this thing with her hands the Illumin, which she, okay. they said is the Illuminati thing, which is not. It's just something she does on her whatever. But she if, if we if everything is satanic and everything is anti-semitic and everything is like you know enraging everyone then we're not then what are we actually mad about? We're just mad about everything that happens now. No, but the 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 Sam the Sam Smith, yeah, Sam Smith. It was uh, at with Kim Petras. Who's, I don't I don't know. I know who's you. Did you you watch? I watched it. I did watch yeah. it. Yes, I, I I began watching when the Madonna situation came on there, and she <clears throat> is the ultimate legend. Kim. No, oh, Madonna. Madonna. Well, Madonna uh, introduced them. Right? Yeah, Madonna introduced them. <clears throat> And Madonna, like, I, yeah, I, she's a legend. She's there's nothing like her. She's going on tour. She wrote the book on being a legend, she and she book. literally not only that kept it together. Yeah. In other words, there was no she was in rehabs and she was in shmehabs and yeah. she kept it together. A part in which is because she has spiritual. Um, basis she she's belongs to the kabbalah center and she has somebody she runs things through she doesn't just run out and say i'm doing this i'm doing that she has and but but the, but but her appearance there was like a little bit jarring jarring and people came for her and there was a whole thing because uh someone took a photo of her like at a really bad angle and like it kind of went around the internet she made a whole statement about it what yeah i don't say? like well, that what she say she that was it's like, ageist. yeah, that this is ageist and misogynistic, right. and like that I've been dealing with this my whole career, and then actually, then yesterday, yeah. or like within the last forty-eight hours, she posted another picture and was like, "Look how cute I am now that the swelling from my surgery has gone down." So like, she said that, yeah. yeah. So she, her <laughs> face looks much better now, but when she was at the Grammys, she was all swollen and puffy, and people took this horrible angle picture, so she looked even worse. They would never do that. So to then why a would man, you do though. the Grammys? Because they would never do it. To they man. would You're never right. do that to a man. Yeah, it is ageist. Madonna's right, and she has been dealing with that her whole career. Yeah. She uh is and but she was trying to be like all edgy and like she but that's her showing thing. her leg. It's I don't know. It was it was it's either it hits the edginess or not. Don't be like and da 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 and don't tell the audience when to clap. That's different. They don't tell the audience yeah, that when was to a clap. If they clap, good for you. You got an applause break. If they didn't clap, move on. This is when you would clap. Okay. Um, okay. Speaking of moving on, should we? Yes. Uh, um, speaking of clapping. Yes. That's it. Should we do a recap of upcoming shows? Yes. Oh, we're that Folks. deep in it? Wow. Um, okay, Ooh, next up is... This episode flew by except for the part where Leo said he hates everything right. we're talking about. <laughs> well, I I'll talk to you about it after the episode. Um, London is coming up. All five of those shows are sold out. <laughs> then March 12th, you're at Tempe Improv Yes. in Arizona. There Here's are still stuff. some tickets left for that. Uh, then March 22nd, you're in Montreal. There are still some seats left for the late show there. Uh, March 23rd and 25th uh, in Toronto. Those are all sold out. Yeah. Now we have your West Coast tour, June 1st in Vancouver. Uh, June 4th in Seattle, which I think Seattle is sold out too, or there's only like single seats left there. Um, June 6th in San Francisco. And June 8th at the Saban Theater in Beverly Hills, your biggest play in L.A. to date. And the Ooh. bottom is already sold out. The bottom, it's yep. huge. We, we, we went to go see it. The bottom is all sold out, and now there's like the t the first part of the tiers of the sold upper out, balcony, and the seats in the back. Yeah, I it's, love that. It's insane. So um, great. Skokie, Illinois, June fifteenth. That is also. I think there's only like the handicap seats left, or like the, the ones at the end, the accessible. So limp seats. when you come in. So yeah, come in with the sticker or whatever you need, and then uh, uh -huh. June 29th, you you're in New Jersey for two shows. We added a late show because the first show is sold out. That's in Deal. That's the Deal area. It's the technically in Manasquan. This is deal which is near deal yeah so, so all the sys will come to you 
Um, what is an ah. S-Y? Syrians. And then uh, July 30th at Sony Hall in New York City. That show is sold out. So the ticket prices that you see when you go to click to buy tickets are verified resale tickets, which means someone else has purchased that ticket and added it to the resale pool, which we have no control over that prices. So please don't send me DMs complaining that they're very expensive. We price them very reasonably. What happens on the after sale market, we have no control of. Then we just added August 24th, a show in Baltimore. Yes. Um, at at Magoobies, Magoobies, which is a comedy club. Uh, we got lots of requests for Baltimore, so please buy tickets there. We're listening to you. Um, and then there's more to come soon. We're working on. We can't announce the other stuff. No, please. don't no. announce. Okay. It's not live. Yet. Okay, that's it. I wish everybody. Wow. Did I do a good job at that? That was, that was amazing. amazing. Wow. That was the best and, part and of the show. That was I'm the best gonna, part of the show. I'm, I'm carrying this whole <laughs> podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Your back hurts, huh? Yeah. Edith, Edith, this is what you were talking about. Yeah. Shout out to Edith. She said you were the voice of reason, not, not, not the voice that carries the whole show. Anyway, you heard where the shows are. Make sure you come. Be the friend who brings the friends to the comedy show. Get the tickets for your friends. That's Mashiach Energy. That's Mashiach Energy. No, that's Andre Thank you all Peter. very much. Bye-bye, no. everybody. Bye. Bye.